What is going on guys and welcome to the video. So this video is going to be a full day of eating showing you what exactly I eat on days where I run and lift. So this morning, I'm about to now count 10 miles. This afternoon, I will be lifting a push strength session. So those are my two workouts for the day. And I'll show you what I'm eating around all of those workouts. So I'm about to throw back some G1M Sport and then go off for this run. Now I start every training session off with some fuel. So this morning's fuel source, two scoops G1M Sport salted watermelon in about 16 ounces of cold water. This is going to supply me 40 grams of carbohydrates in a fast gastric emptying carb source, meaning that it digests very quickly. 40 grams of carbohydrates, 700 milligrams of sodium. This is a great fuel source for a 10 mile run. And I'm going to drink this, do some mobility, some stretching for about 20 minutes, and then go off for that run. So let's go. So as you'll see today, I loosely track my calories and my macros. What I don't want to happen is that I under eat and I under fuel and I under recover. So when I'm tracking or loosely tracking, it's usually just to make sure I'm eating enough. So today, kind of what I'm shooting for is around 200 grams of protein 85 to 90 grams of fat and 450 to 500 grams of carbs now i recently pulled dietary fat down and increased carbs and i'll talk about that in this video but the primary goal is to keep muscle glycogen topped off at all times that's going to promote a significant increase in performance and optimize recovery. Come here, Rem. Come here. Oh yeah. Good girl. Good girl. 10 miles complete, one hour, 17 minutes, 41 seconds at a 746 minute per mile pace. Beautiful. Let's go eat some food. First thing is first before we make breakfast, morning sups, one scoop of strong greens, one scoop of strong reds, five grams of creatine monohydrate in this shaker bottle right here. One serving, which is two soft gels of strong omega, strong joints, and strong multivitamin right here. We're gonna wash these soft gels and capsules down with this superfood concoction. One thing that I like to do in an easy way to get more carbs in is I have one cup of egg whites, two whole eggs. I'm gonna add half a cup of old fashioned oats to those eggs and just mix that up in there. So here is meal number one. This is post run, first full meal of the day. Like I said, one cup of egg whites, two whole eggs, half a cup of oats in this mixture right here. Then I topped it with some sea salt, got a banana on the side. I'm about to dive into about a tablespoon of this honey that has a honeycomb inside it. Got this at the farmer's market. And then I have one cup of goat's milk kefir. I have this every single day. It's a great probiotic drinkable yogurt. So this is the first meal. Got the honey on the scale here. I like doing that just to be a little bit more accurate. We're gonna go for 21 grams. Mmm, 
It's nine grams. 22 grams. I love honey. That's just a big chunk of honeycomb in there too. Mmm. I could just drink this jar every single morning after my run. Before we dive any deeper into this video, I wanna let you know it is sponsored by my good friends at Helix, who make premium mattresses customized to fit your unique needs and ship conveniently right to your door. Now we have a Helix mattress on every bed in our entire house. This is where Steph's mom stays when she comes to visit Helix Midnight Lux. Now Helix makes it really easy to find the best mattress for you and they created a quiz on their website. And this quiz is gonna ask you a series of questions, like are you a side sleeper, a back sleeper, a stomach sleeper? Do you sleep by yourself or with someone else? Do you prefer a soft, medium, or firm mattress? Do you have any pain while you sleep? And based off your responses, it's going to recommend the best mattress for your unique needs. And like I said, it recommended the Helix Midnight Lux for us, we love it, and we've put one on every bed in this house. So after you take the quiz and find the best mattress for you, Helix is gonna ship it to your house in this small, compact box. You're gonna pull that box into your home, open it up, and let the mattress expand before your eyes. It's magical. It's important to keep in mind that all Helix mattresses are fiberglass free, and they offer a 10-year warranty and 100-night sleep trial. So if you are ready to upgrade your sleeping experience, go to helixsleep.com slash nickbear to get 20% off plus two free pillows. And Helix also offers flexible payment programs and financing options. Now, back to the video. So we built out this BPN Studio Kitchen for recipe shoots, and I figured why not use it for a full day of eating video today. So I'm about to show you my second meal. Just got out of a few phone calls and meetings. I have four ounces of grass-fed, grass-finished ground beef. I have some sweet potatoes that I'm about to throw in the microwave. We got some garbanzo beans. Uh, last night, I diced up three whole beets and I just roasted them in the oven for like 20 minutes. And then I have a 0% fat-free Greek yogurt. So let's mix this stuff up and then let's talk why I'm decreasing fats and increasing carbs. Second meal of the day is done. I'm opening up some truff hot sauce right now. I'm gonna put a little bit, just a little, on the beef. A little goes a long way. So we have the ground beef, garbanzo beans, beets, roasted sweet potatoes, and then this uh, fat-free Greek yogurt, which this provides 16 grams of protein. Growing up in Pennsylvania, my mom and grandma would always make pickled red beet eggs, and they loved them. I never liked them. Now I've, I've acquired a love for beets, but after you eat a lot of beets, your mouth will turn red, and sometimes your pee also turns beet red. Now this is why I love marathon prep so much. And as you guys know, I'm currently prepping for two different races. The first is last man standing in early September in Maine, and then I'm going into a full-blown marathon prep, which is CIM December 3rd. I'm going for a 245 marathon. And with a marathon prep, there is a lot of strategy in regards to training and nutrition. Now, the reason that I am decreasing dietary fat and increasing carbohydrate intake is because I want to maximize my performance, my workouts, my recovery uh, by having my muscle glycogen topped off but also just accessible 
glucose being energy in the body. So I wanna maximize performance, but I also want to optimize for my race weight. So right now I'm sitting around 200 pounds. By the time I race CIM, I would like to be around 190, maybe a little less than 190. So by decreasing dietary fat a little bit, I can reduce some, some calories. Fat is more calorically dense than carbohydrates. A gram of fat has nine calories per gram and carbohydrates and protein are four calories per gram. So decreasing dietary fat a little bit, increasing carbs, two goals. One, optimize performance and two, optimize race weight. Meal number three, I have a Ezekiel cinnamon raisin muffin that I toasted and then I put some, uh, some raspberries on there, just smash some raspberries. This is nature's freshest, simplest jelly. I have the rest of the raspberries here. So I have about 150 grams of raspberries total, a cold honey crisp apple, which is in my opinion, the best apple and the best way to eat it. And then I have two scoops of our vegan plant-based chocolate protein powder. Added a little bit of water. And the reason I like using the vegan protein powder sometimes is because it just mixes so well with water into like a paste. And if you're craving a pasty sludge, that's the way to do it. Meal three, carbs, protein, good stuff. So I'm about halfway through my workout right now. Uh, the first half of the workout was chest focused. Now I'm about to move into some triceps, finish off with push-ups. This week I'm gonna separate out shoulders from this workout. Usually I would, I would add shoulders into this workout being all things push. Uh, but I started off with a dumbbell chest press and then flies and then I did a plate loaded chest press machine and now I'm gonna move into some tricep accessory work. Okay, that's set number one of four. Do four sets, 25 reps each set, 100 push-ups to end the workout. Okay, just got home from BPN HQ, about to make dinner for the family. And I'm gonna show you a meal that we've been making pretty frequently recently. It is crispy rice. We learned how to make crispy rice from Kat and Bobby. And then we're gonna do a honey mustard chicken. Super simple, very easy, but extremely delicious. So let me show you. Step number one is the honey mustard chicken. So we have our chicken thighs right here in a dish. And what I'm about to mix up is this freshly chopped rosemary, Dijon mustard, honey. It's gonna be a quarter cup of mustard, quarter cup of honey, pepper, salt. I'm gonna paint brush it on the chicken and then put it in the oven at 375 for about 30 minutes. Now for the crispy rice. Crispy rice is easy to make. All you need is a saucepan like this, two cups of rice, four cups of water, two tablespoons of a good olive oil. You're gonna bring everything to a boil and then put it on simmer and cover the pan and let that sit for about 30 minutes. So you know the rice is done when it starts smelling a little burnt and then you get a pan or a plate here and you flip it. And that's crispy rice. It's obviously called crispy rice because the outside is crispy. And then we have the chicken thighs that are done and we have butternut squash as well. Just lightly tossed in olive oil and some seasonings and dinner is served. So we got the chicken here, butternut squash, and then the rice with a balsamic 
glaze on top looking very good i highly recommend making the chicken and the rice it will probably become a weekly staple in your house just like ours meal of the night so I just threw two peaches in the air fryer so I'm gonna dice these up they look delicious I have one serving of good culture cottage cheese and then I'm gonna add some of this maple syrup that is from our friends farm and some cinnamon so the peach cobbler the peach protein cobbler is done and I'm about to dive into this. Steph made this for me the first time a few months ago. Haven't had it since, but we had two extremely ripe peaches being asked to be made in a peach cobbler, so that's what I decided to do. Give this a try. If you have an air fryer, throw in the air fryer. If not, you can just throw it on the stove top or the grill. Just warm up those peaches. Make yourself a nice decadent dessert in preparation for a big run tomorrow morning. Again, thanks for tuning into the video, guys. Really appreciate you. And as always, go on more. We'll see you in the next one.